Hello students, welcome to the EPG Part Shala. I am Dr. Richa Singh, working as a scientist in Dairy Chemistry Division, ICAR National Dairy Research Institute. Today we will discuss about the thin layer chromatography under the paper Biochemical Techniques. Module on thin layer chromatography is covered under two different parts. This is part B of the module. It is advised that students learn first part A and then proceed to part B. The visualization of TLC plates. The spots in TLC plates containing fluorescent material can directly be viewed by illuminating the plates under UV light. As quenching of fluorescent material causes dark spots on the surface of the plate that are visible under UV light. These dark patches should be marked with a pencil. A number of chemical stains can be used for the compound which are not visible under UV. Chemical stain or locating reagent can be very specific for a particular molecule or a functional group or it can be a general purpose stain like iodine that is the most common stain available. When plates are placed in a chamber containing iodine crystal or sprayed by iodine throughout the plate resulting in staining most of the organic compounds brown. Other widely available locating reagents are ninhydrin, para aniseldehyde, permanganate and ceric ammonium molybdate. The reagents are mainly sprayed uniformly on the TLC plates for the best result. After staining, the plates are heated until white, yellow or brown spot appear. You should avoid the overheating because it may cause the browning of entire plate and resulting in obscuring the spots. The common visualizing agents in thin layer chromatography. The first is the aluminum chloride that is prepared in 1% ethanolic solution and it is applied for the identification of flavonoids. The second is para aniseldehyde and sulfuric acid combination. It is used for phenol, sugar, steroids and terpenes. The para anisidine hydrochloride, it is applied for the identification of carbohydrates and sugar. Anisidine phthalate for the carbohydrates and reducing sugar. Para dimethyl amino benzaldehyde hydrochloric acid for the indole derivatives and amines. And 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrogen for the aldehydes and ketones. Continuing with the common visualizing agents. 2, 2 prime diphenyl picryl hydrazyl for aldehydes and ketones. Combination of formaldehyde and sulfuric acid for alkaloids, aromatic hydrocarbons. The combination of formaldehyde and phosphoric acid for steroid, alkaloids, the Gibbs reagent for phenol, the iodine vapor also known as the universal for identification of all organic compounds, the ninhydrin for amino acids, amines and amino sugar, the combination of ninhydrin with pyridine and glacial acetic acid for peptides, phosphoric acid for steroids, esterol and bile acid, the potassium hydroxide and vanillin solution for amino acids and amine. The analysis of thin layer chromatography. The extent of migration of a compound in thin layer chromatography depend upon the adsorption coefficient. It is measured in terms of RF values. RF value is the ratio of distance traveled by the analyte from the start to the distance traveled by the solvent front means RF value is equals to small d divided by capital D small d just represent the distance traveled by the analyte and capital D represent the distance traveled by the solvent front. However, the RF values are not always constant parameter. They depend upon the temperature, humidity and the geometry of solvent reservoir. If RF value is between 0.3 to 0.7, then it is giving you the best separation. 
but if the RF value is less than 0.3 means the sample is too concentrated and you need to dilute the sample and if RF value is more than 0.7 it means the sample is diffused too much. Slide 17 2 dimensional thin layer chromatography. 2 dimensional TLC is used for higher degree of separation. In case of complex sample mixture having RF values very close to each other, the sample is spotted on one corner and a solvent system is used to develop the TLC in one direction. Once it is developed, the TLC plates are removed and air dried. Further, another run is performed for the TLC plate but at a perpendicular direction to the first in a solvent system of different polarity. Thus, in two dimensional TLC, its spots are separated twice and resulting in an efficient and better separation. High performance TLC, also known as HP TLC. It is relatively a new technique in which the TLC plates are coated with smaller, more uniform particles of controlled porosity. HPTLC involves precise sample application and development of plates. The results are interpreted using the machine software resulting in repeatability of the result. HPTLC permit the better separation in shorter time and also the better quantitative assessment through TLC. The adsorption and partition TLC. Initially we have seen that TLC is basically a adsorption chromatography but it can also be used as a partition chromatography. The separation will be by adsorption chromatography under normal conditions. Since very little absorbed water remains in the plate as it had been dried sufficiently and a non-polar mobile phase is generally used. However, if the plate retains high quantity of water or the solvent system contains a highly polar component, the separation will be due to the partition chromatography. The advantages of thin layer chromatography. The number one, thin layer chromatography is a sensitive, fast and simple technique. It is inexpensive since material required for TLC are very easy to procure and maintain like chamber, capillary, watch glass, plate, solvent, pencil and developing agent. The solvent system in TLC can be changed easily and it is possible to design solvent system according to your requirement by using hit and trial method. TLC is a micro technique because a nanogram of sample can also be used for the identification of compounds. Disadvantages of TLC TLC plates are not very long and thus the stationary phase is limited. That is the efficiency of chromatography plate is low and thus the separation is limited as compared to the other chromatography technique. Second, the detection limit in TLC is very high, means you cannot identify the compound on a very smaller concentration. Third, the TLC is operated in an open vessel, so factors like humidity and temperature means the environmental factor can change the result in terms of RF values, so it will give you the different RF value in different environmental conditions. Dear students, up to now you have seen the theoretical, practical as well as how to calculate the RF value for the thin layer chromatography. Now you all can understand that where we can apply the thin layer chromatography. It can be used to identify the sample. Secondly, it can be used for the purify the sample. And if you have given a sample of unknown purity by comparing its RF value with the standard compound, you can also identify the purity of compound. So here you can see the TLC has a wide application. But when you are performing TLC on the bench, you will come across a lot of common problems that you have to take care. The first is the larger spot. 
means you have to take care the sample application diameter should not be more than 1 mm because if it is more than 1 mm you will get the overlapping of the spots. Secondly the concentration of the sample. In case of TLC we require a very smaller concentration of the sample but if somehow you have applied the higher concentration of the sample you will find the sample will travel in a streak not in a spot. So in this case you can make the appropriate dilution of the sample and you can carry out your TLC experiment. The third common problem that you encounter in the thin layer chromatography is the uneven progress of the solvent front. That can happen that you have not using the flat bottom jar so you can replace your jar. Secondly you have not cut the TLC plate properly so you can take care while cutting the TLC plate. And thirdly the mobile phase is smaller in amount that is required. So you can pour the more the mobile phase and you can carry out the TLC. So far we have now covered the basic principles, practical aspect, theoretical aspect as well as calculation of RF value, its application, advantages, disadvantages and also the common problem that you may encounter while performing the thin layer chromatography on bench. So student I hope that you have understand the thin layer chromatography in a better manner and now you can perform the thin layer chromatography on bench. Thank you.